2050? Life in 2050 is likely to be very different to what we know it now in many ways. It will be very different from our perspective. The people who are born today will grow up and live through the changes that create that different world of 2050. The changes that we're about to undergo will unfold against different kinds of people differently. Whether or not it's apocalyptic depends basically on where you are lucky enough to live and the resources you have access to. Climate change is one of these existential threats to the continuity of human civilization that is so big and so consequential that we can't properly wrap our heads around it. We've seen forest fires in Australia and in California. That will happen continuously and in far more places. We've seen water shortages and droughts. They will become much more extensive and a lot of people will have no access to water or sanitation as a result. Our crops are going to not be able to be grown and feed a growing population. The bands, the areas in which edible crops can be produced will shift across the globe. The paddy crop, for example, the rice crop, beyond two degrees of warming, that fails. And given the fragility of our global food systems, this is tragic for everyone. Climate change is likely to be one of the great causes of human migration. And, and we're already seeing examples of that, of, of population actually having to leave their traditional lands because they can't grow crops anymore. In many ways, that could well play out as the migrant crises that we've seen in the last five to 10 years. We are already not dealing particularly well with mass population movements and, and migrations we're already seeing is that if we don't grasp this properly, we see an increase in a kind of nationalism. There's a fairly standard playbook that, that certain kind of politicians will deploy in these circumstances. A pulling up the drawbridge, a fantasy that we can self-isolate from the climate crisis. That is something we must all collectively resist. A world that warms beyond two degrees is a very scary world. And the current rate of warming is 2.2 degrees per decade. So that's how close we are to the precipice. We've had half a century of warning that the climate crisis is happening, and we are still massively unprepared. The opportunity in which we can still do something significant and meaningful is shrinking by the day. And it's why we need to begin the conversation now. And I have to remain in the hopeful camp because I see a very genuine sense of empowerment that is being taken on by normal citizens. If you think of Extinction Rebellion, this is done by people like you and me, people who are genuinely concerned and feel that they cannot stay silent anymore. Some of these changes that older generations see as surprising and terrible I think younger generations look at and go, well, that's interesting. How can we respond to that? More and more, it makes everybody realize that they cannot be a bystander. And for lawyers, let's reflect on our own proud history in political movements. Lawyers need to reclaim that sense of having a crucial part to play in our political trajectory and taking a stand. I think there's a real opportunity for us to grasp these issues, to do something to change our future so that we can be optimistic. For too long, the lawyers were often the ones who would say, no, we can't do this. I think those days have gone. When the world becomes more volatile, more complex, more challenging, that then actually that's when the world needs lawyers to help sort out that complexity. So the role of, of the legal profession in, in tackling climate change and, and for that matter many other sustainability issues is really being an enabler for change. The regulations and enforcement that we put in place now will determine what the future looks like. We as a species have persisted through everything nature has thrown at us ever since we emerged as anatomically modern humans, you know, 100,000 years ago. Be activists now to ensure that actually the future is bright. We need to be honest that we're not facing a situation where everything is going to be okay, but there is also this potential to carve something out of this crisis. And that is where I would choose to invest my hope.